What is up, card fighters? I am super excited to showcase to you guys my new updated variation of Claudine post Evanfall Onslaught. Now, Evanfall Onslaught was a very interesting set for Stoikea as this gave a new low key support for a lot of the weaker decks. Grantfia, Roroa, Claudine, and Leonorn, decks that rely on plant tokens as part of their win condition, all got very powerful new support. Hell, even Shieldfisher got some fun stuff he can use. But I will say that Claudine did walk out the winner from this set besides Magnolia. Getting the additional power of the new order means that your plant token strategy is way more powerful than it used to be. You're able to take advantage of orders and convert them into card advantage, as well as the fact that we are now able to take advantage of blitz orders for defensive purposes. I think that this new take on Claudine is a very linear style of play, but it's one that should be explored, and we move on over to camera two, we're going to go ahead and do that. So with that being said, let's get started. Now starting off with our ride line, our ride line is this one from the prior deck. Any deck that I play more than four orders in, I think it's just better to play this ride line. You can turn all of those dead orders in your hand into some card advantage, so that this way you can get some more shield as well as resourceful pieces that you can play before you go into Claudine to make sure your board is completely set up to use her on full power. And for our first grade three, three copies of the lovely Reminiscence Flower Maiden, Claudine. Now after spending some time with this card, I will say this. Claudine is a very resourceful vanguard. She takes care of herself by giving you the two plant target tokens needed to activate her effect for the setup of the additional drive, four attacks, full board power. She does a lot, and the support that she needs isn't much to make her work. As long as you meet the requirement for a three retire, you can pretty much start playing the game right away, which is not difficult for Stoikea to do. The four attacks are extremely helpful on top of the triple drive, pushing the power of your plant token to the maximum effort that you possibly can due to the fact that again plant tokens only have 5,000 power so you really want any sort of edge you can get to make that plant token scary. Claudine's benefit as well as the power of your order makes the deck so much better in terms of style of play because your plant token will be swinging for numbers that are just as scary as their normal unit competitors. Moving on to grade twos, I am playing one copy of Atrocious Moth Girl Maple. Any way that we can get the three retirement for Claudine just out of the way as soon as possible, I think is important. I am playing only one copy of Maple and not Maple and the other card that brings itself back from the drop zone. I have decided that for this build, since I am still trying it out and this is what I've come to so far, I found that you know just committing yourself to those pieces that help you push in the early game push more numbers onto the plant token is a little bit better than just having two cards that essentially do the same thing to trigger one skill off. For my next grade two, I am playing three copies of Prod Pollen Refulius. Now I know that Refilius is a card that a lot of people still are not playing, but I actually do think that it is important, especially in this variation of Claudine. There are some cuts that I had to make because I've realized that since you can only play one order per turn, the order that I want to play is normally the order that is the new one that gives the additional power to the other things. So you need more ways of generating more plant tokens outside of relying on your orders like you did in the last build to help you get your board right. So her ability actually becomes a little bit more relevant now because she turns herself into three bodies. So this card automatically is either the retire for Claudine or it's one of the pieces that you have on the board to set up the board perfectly for Claudine besides Claudine's effect to get more plant tokens by herself. Now that's it for grade 2s, not much to say there, the grade 2 lineup was pretty simple, but the grade 1s is where I've definitely been experimenting. So starting off with grade 1s, I have two copies of Citrus Kid. Now the reason why I'm playing Citrus Kid over the cat, which I know has been really popular in Claudine lately in terms of deck building, is because Citrus Kid gives power to the token, and like I've been saying throughout Claudine and my experience with her, you need as much pressure on that plant token as possible to make that attack as scary as possible because again, despite Claudine, despite the order benefit, plant tokens are still just a 5k base unit. And in the horrible situation that you don't have the order in your hand or you choose to go for something else, you're going to want another way of making sure that that plant token is just as scary as if it was with the order active. So Citrus Sand giving you a soul charge because we do use a little bit more soul because the new cards we're playing, on top of the fact that it gives power to the plant token, makes us a really solid card. Next up, I'm playing two copies of Performing Petal Diantha. I have said this before and I will say this again, this card is a monster reborn in Stoikea. I love this card, great booster, great attacker, whatever you need it to be. Fetches back any piece in the drop zone, so if you need to set up for Claudine, this card does that. And yeah, I just, it's monster reborn for Stoikea. 
Next up, I'm playing two copies of Dragon Tree Wretch Bist Hybis. Now this card has been really popular in all the decks for Stoikea lately because orders are just getting crazy with Stoikea. But this one actually matters a little bit in this particular build. Now with Ivis, you use it to get the key order that I will be showcasing later on in the video back to your hand consistently because that is now your new win condition. I will admit that it does make the deck style of play linear, that fact that we are so hell reliant on this order. But Ivis allowing us to recycle it, it's a CB and a Soul Blast that we don't use outside of the effects of other cards, means that we're always guaranteed to have our winning order in our hand or fetch out any of the other orders that we might need in terms of like offense or defense depending on how the match is going. The one thing I will say about this card now is use it when you need it because that counter blast and soul blast even with the other cards we have in the deck and the fact that Claudine is free do add up. So just make sure you're using this card when you need it because if you're not paying attention to your resources you will lose. For my next grade one four copies of the Boro Boro Mushrooms. The best plant token generator for Stoikea, it gives itself uh, you a soul charge, gives you two plant tokens, automatic setup for Claudine, just literally fuels her entire strategy, becoming a key piece for it. It's actually really important now because we play Claudine and Bist Ivis, which eat up soul and other cards as well. So you do get Max's card of as a four of. It sets, again, it sets up for all of your plays as well as giving you the early game rush to take advantage of the order and opening up with two of these or at least this and one of this is just insane on top of the order. Next up, I play four Stoikea PGs. Um, I'm playing the four Stoikea PGs instead of one Elementaria, just in that rare situation where I need more bodies to tribute. Hopefully it doesn't get to that, but if you want to play Elementaria, go ahead. And we are finally on to orders. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the MVP of the deck. Why Claudine is officially a rogue deck and something I think you should be afraid of. We have four copies of Blessings to the Flowering Buds. Now this is a new card and it deserves a debut. Until the end of turn, all of your rear guards with original 5,000 power or less get power plus 10,000. Auto rear guard circle. When this unit attack hits, you may return this unit to the hand. Okay, so the second skill is completely irrelevant. It's the first skill. Play this card, you give 10,000 power to your entire board. That's what this card is. On top of Claudine and Persona Ride, some turns you can give 25k to your front row and then 10k to your back row if you go all plant tokens you might have one normal unit that's usually how it's been going for me but this finally gives what this deck has been missing the additional early game push from your plant token generators to make them scary this card makes your plant tokens on your persona right turns like i said really huge but in the early game it's where it really shines that's why dropping your perfilius or your Bora Bora Mushrooms to get more of those plant tokens onto the field early means that you can be swinging on turn one, on like your first grade one turn, 30k left and right because of 15k, 15k, 30, 23, 30. That's insane, especially in the early game because even with defensive triggers, it, your opponent still has to commit 15, 10k from their hand while they're still getting slammed with this. And nine times out of ten, people don't attack plant tokens, so dropping the cow on them to be able to recycle this out has been like the saving grace of Claudine's early game. But this is where the deck gets a little bit interesting, so I am choosing Blitz Orders into the deck now, and the first one is two copies of Fine Drink of Abolishment for Sins. Now, this is an order that I did not play in this deck, but I did showcase in Shieldfisher, so I'll give it a debut. Play this with cost Soul Blast 1, draw a card. Choose one of your units to give it 5,000 power until end of turn of that battle for each order card with a different card name in your drop and bind zone in total. Now the reason why we're playing Blitz Orders in the deck is because your entire strategy revolves around this card now. Until we have set up for another card, you're going to be just dropping this all the time to make sure that your plant tokens are getting plus 15,000 onto the board, making them extremely high attackers. And again, on Persona Right turns, it gets even scarier because of the additional power that those plant tokens have, depending on your situation. So because we're going to this card all the time, there was no reason to like put other orders into the deck that weren't going to do anything, so now we have to take advantage of Blitz orders to protect ourselves. For my next Blitz order, I am playing one copy of Sweet Honey Garden. So when you see this card, this card for Soul Blaster 1 is just a 15k shield straight up. If you have this already in the drop zone, it becomes a 25k shield. So again, another defensive option in Claudine that you have because your strategy revolves around this. So we can just convert these Blitz Orders into more shield for anything. Now, despite what I said earlier about this being the win condition, there are still some orders I feel like the deck should have just in case. 
And one of those orders is Mythiarch Habitat. I feel like Mythiarch Habitat, I've talked about this card a lot, and it's honestly going to become a staple in a lot of my Soy decks. Just being able to check the top seven, start just digging for those pieces right away so they're in the drop zone, so that they can be called out later, like with Diantha, or just check your mushrooms or this on board to start filling up those plant tokens, means that if your hand is bad, and even if you have this and it's dead, at least for the next turn, you can finally keep this in your hand to set up with this, because this will set up for you, so when you drop this next turn, you're good to go. So that's one, but if you don't like this, you can definitely convert it into another Blitz Order. I personally think that you convert it into the Ghost Chase or one of the Blitz Orders that actually like lets you recycle one of your pieces. That's me personally. But this is what I'm playing for right now. And then I am playing one copy of Nectar of Sensationalism. Now, Flowering Buds is fantastic. This card is amazing, especially in their early game. And in your late game, it's amazing as well because you're just going to have a full board of plant tokens maybe a booster that's a non-plant token but your left and right columns are usually just all plant tokens that benefit off of this however in the situation where you need to close out the game and you need something to like help you guarantee that i do feel like one copy of this is a good pick it gives 15,000 power to your stuff as well as giving the plus one critical to your plant token which means that with Claudine's effect in this, you're essentially getting the same bonus that you would have gotten if you had activated this already, but all of it's going out to the one unit you're choosing to restand. But that restanding unit has a critical on it, so that's two attacks that you have to deal with that have critical prior to getting triggers. And now for my trigger lineup. So since my last video, my trigger lineup, I'm way more confident about it now, but I am playing eight critical. I'm playing three draw triggers, one Stoikia OT, as well as four heal triggers. Claudine with the new order is an extremely linear deck, eight critical, three draw, OT, heal, as well as the blitz orders. You have a lot of defensive options in this deck and this new order has made this deck extremely linear in play. I will admit that you are sacrificing versatility to just go into this for, you know, all of the games. However, honestly, it's worth it. The additional 10k power and like I said earlier, swinging for those 30k columns prior to your opponent being at grade three can help you win games, honestly, before they even hit grade three. I haven't had that happen to me yet, but I have pushed my opponent to four or five damage with this active because they, they simply just cannot deal with the benefit you're getting from all of this stuff. Otherwise, I think that this is the best spot that Claudine has been in. I really do think it is a rogue contender. Please be aware of this deck because they drop this on you and you don't know what it is. You're taking three damage first turn with no defensives, hands down. 30k, 23, 30k. Hands down, perfect setup, you're taking three damage. But otherwise, guys, that's it for this deck profile. Thank you so much for staying tuned throughout the entirety of it. If you enjoy seeing cots like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do not forget that notification bell so you guys are always stay on my newest videos coming out. With that being said, I'll catch you later. Peace.